Before we jump into round 57, if you want to use stitch markers, you can place one in the stitch in the two together, stitch in the middle, in the center that um, we just made in the last round, in round 56. And then we get started with round 57. It's getting so big now. <laughs> okay, we start as always with a chain one and then the corner again, the puff stitch corner with a three yarn over. Closing chain and another extra two chains. Another puff stitch. And a closing chain. And we start to work into the outer loops, which are these ones. We skip the inner loops and we work in the outer loops. And we start with seven single crochet. The fourth of those falls into the picot and the sixth falls into the split spike. Then a single crochet in the back loop only. Five single crochet. The second falls into the other split spike here. And the fifth is just before the clover blossom. Another Pico single crochet and that is just above directly directly above the clover blossom here then two single crochet and a single crochet in the back loop only that's the back loop of this split spike then eight single crochet the fourth falls into the picot stitch. The seventh falls into this split spike. And there is one more. Then a single crochet in the back loop only. And again single crochets for the second falls into this split spike here, two more, then a back loop, single back loop, and now we're going to work one single crochet and then our special picot stitch where we work in the front loop, then we make our three chains and then we go in the back loop of the same stitch. So we've got three loops on the hook and we yarn over and go through all three loops on the hook. And I just pull this a little bit to the front. And that is because we're going forward now with a split spike. And I'm going to mark my next stitch because that's a far forward here and pull this to the side and then that's the next stitch which is again a picot but the normal one From here we make six single crochet, second falls into the picot in the previous round, and the fifth falls into this split spike. Then again a single crochet in the back loop only, and another seven single crochet, second falls into the split spike. The fourth into a picot and the sixth as well. And then one more. 
And we're going again to make a split spike to split this stitch here. And three single crochet. And the DC BB, a double crochet behind and below. So we're working a double crochet in those top loops of the stitch that was skipped when we made the two together stitch in the previous round. That's our center. And from here, another three single crochet. And then we're working a split spike ahead. So we go into this split spike here. And this will be our next stitch. And it's the first of seven. Second goes in the picot. The fourth goes in the picot. The sixth goes into the split spike. And then one more. A single crochet in the back loop only. And then six single crochet. The second goes into the split spike. The fifth goes into the picot, and then one more. And again, we're going to make our special picot stitch. Front loop only, three chains, then go into the back loop of the same stitch, yarn over and go through all three loops. And we're going back with a big split spike into this Split spike here. Pulling it forward. This is our next stitch, which is also a pico stitch. We've got one single crochet. And again, see if the picot goes to the back, just pull it to the front. Then a single in the back loop only, in both loops, and again in the back loop only. Then four single crochet. The third stitch goes into this split spike and then we'll work a single crochet in the back loop only. And now we've got eight single crochet, the second goes into the split spike. The fifth goes into the picot. And the eighth is just before this split spike here, in which we work a single crochet in the back loop only. Two more single crochet, and now a picot. Oops, hello. Then Five single crochet, the fourth goes into the split spike, a single crochet in the back loop only, and seven single crochet, the second goes also in the split spike, the fourth goes into the picot. Six and the seventh is the last stitch in the round and it is worked again in the outer loops of the puff stitch. 
and that is your round 57 just finishing this puff stitch corner and that's it so and if you want you can place lots and lots of stitch markers now in these in all of these stitches where we had single crochet in the back loop only. For example, we could be using the first three. Where are we? One. And then two. And then three here so we could use color A for the first three and the last three the correspond the corresponding on the other side and color C in the fourth and fifth which are here. There we go. Just above this big rose on either side. So we've got the big rose here at the top and on either side of this big rose there will be a free front loop. Where you can place your stitch markers and there is another free front loop here which is just before the center and between those um, uh, between those split spike stitches okay and that's it three more sides or three more times on the other sides and then again closing with a slip stitch into the outer loop of the puff stitch and I see you in round 58. Round 58. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Almost there. Almost there. We start with a chain one and um, puff stitch with three yarn overs all together. And I've got that song in my head now. Oh my goodness. And probably you too because I started it. One, two, and three yarn over so there's our puff stitch close it with a chain one and we start with four single crochet again make sure to start in the outer loop of the puff stitch here four single crochet all together so that's one two three and four now we've got a combination that we're going to have a lot in here where we start with our special picot stitch where we work in the front loop only, chain three, then we go in the back loop and pull through all three loops. We go forward with a plus one minus two splitting this split spike and the plus one is a split spike stitch as well. We work over this stitch so this is our next and it will be a normal picot. So that's the combination we're going to work a lot. We have one single crochet and a popcorn stitch. You may have a stitch marker here. I already took it out. So we'll make for double crochet then we let go of the loop insert the hook in the first of those 
for double crochets, pull through and close with a chain. And this chain is part of the popcorn. We skip the stitch behind the popcorn, one single crochet. Then again, the combination that I said, our special pico. in the back loop and pull through all three loops and then we go back now splitting this split spike here we follow up with our normal picot stitch and the next stitch is the first of for a single crochet, the second would fall into this picot from the previous round. And again, we're going to work a popcorn stitch. And it'll be above this split spike. Working for double crochet in the same front loop. close with a chain and you notice that mine is a bit long now but it'll all even out that's all good one single and another of our normal picot stitches a picot single crochet two single crochet and our combination special picot forward split spike, splitting this split spike here, and normal picot. One single, a popcorn, and close and if you don't like working popcorns try a cluster stitch you know, a 4DC cluster it'll have a very similar effect and it may be easier and nicer and quicker for you to work one single and again the special pico split pico combination our special pico then we split backwards there and then normal pico afterwards follow with a single crochet and we have another clover blossom let me just take these out easier to see those front loops we start with a treble in the front loop that's one back and two runs below it's our first leg then the second leg is a double treble into the same front loop the third leg is a triple treble into the top loops of this two together stitch here the fourth leg one two three four is again a triple treble in the same top loops then we go back to a double treble into the front loop that's one ahead and two runs down and a treble in the same front loop We've got six legs and now we yarn over and pull through all loops on the hook and close with a chain one. Skip the stitch behind the clover blossom and we'll make th 
three single crochet. And the third of those will fall into this picot stitch from the previous round. And we make another picot and it should be above this split spike so that it sits between those two picot stitches here. We work another three single crochet. And again the combination. Special picot. Split spike. Normal picot. One single crochet. And the popcorn. Same and closing. That's it. One single special pico We need to make this special pico because we need to anchor the stitch down. Spike or split spike. Let me do it again. So I've worked in this, so this will be my next stitch. Didn't work properly. This will be another normal pico. Three single. And a picot that sits on top of the split spike here. Two single crochet. And here's our center stitch. We're going to prepare to work another clover blossom above this center stitch. So we work a single in the back loop only, both loops, and another back loop only. And two single crochet. And again a picot that sits above this split spike. Normal picot. Three single again. Three single crochet. Special picot. Let's spike forward, go in here, normal pico, one single, and the popcorn. We skip the stitch behind this popcorn, one single, and again the combination, special pico stitch. Now we go backwards with our split spike, followed up by a normal pico. And then three single crochet again. A 
comb stitch above this split spike. And another three single crochet. I'm going to take these stitch markers out again when working another clover blossom. A treble in the first front loop, a double treble in the same front loop, a triple treble in the top loop of the two together stitch another double tra uh, triple treble in the same top loops a double treble now in the next free front loop and a treble in the same free front loop now through all loops on the hook closing with a chain one skip the stitch behind and continue with a single crochet in the next our famous combination special pico forward split spike Normal pico. A single crochet and a popcorn. And you see with those free front loops, you always have a re reference whether you're in the correct place or not. And it's easy to see where you've gone wrong in case you did which I don't think you will. The popcorn's finished. Skip the stitch behind the popcorn, one single crochet. Again, special pico. Backward split spike. Normal pico. Two single crochet, normal picot stitch. One single crochet, and you should be above the split spike where you have a free front loop in which we work a popcorn stitch again. Skip the stitch behind the popcorn for a single crochet. And the third falls into this picot stitch. Combination, special picot. Forward split spike. Normal pico, one single crochet, popcorn stitch, We're almost there. Skip the stitch behind the popcorn, one single. Once more, our combination special pick hole, backwards split spike, normal pick hole. 
Norma Picot. And our last four single crochets on the side. And the fourth of those falls into the outer loop of the puff stitch. And here is the puff stitch corner again. There you go. Okay. So now we're going to repeat it on the other three sides. If you want to use stitch markers, I'm not going to put them in. You can place them on either side of this stitch here. You know where we have the stitch marker, maybe or maybe not, in the top loops of this two together stitch. And on either side, there is a free front loop now. We're going to work the clover blossom into these three stitches in the next round. So I'm just going to leave them out for now. But if you want to place them, that's where you would put them. So once you've repeated on the other three sides, then you close with a slip stitch into the outer loop of the puff stitch here. And there is only one more round to go where we've got picot stitches and one clover blossom. So pretty simple. And then we're almost there. So keep on being excited. <laughs> I'll see you in the next round, round 59. Our next to last round 59 is pretty easy. Remember I said in round, at the end of round 56, I said we've got three more rounds. It is four more rounds, but three more rounds where I think it can be beneficial if I guide you through because the last round is just single crochet. Nevertheless, we're going to go through that as well. But first, round 59. So we start with a chain one. And then we make a single crochet into the chain two space. We chain one. And now we're going to make a puff stitch, just one into that chain two space. And I'm going to make a four yarn over puff stitch. Just want this to be a little bit bigger. Okay, closed with a chain one, another chain one and another single crochet into the same chain space. Okay, again we start in the outer loop of this puff stitch here. We start with three single crochet. And then our pico single crochet. And in this round, we on, only have the normal pico. Two single crochet. And another pico. And you see that this pico, and we will have that quite a lot, is in the is made in the top of those uh, of of this split spike between the pico from the previous round. We had the combination, the special pico split normal pico, and now we're going to top this split spike up with a normal pico stitch. You see it's popping backwards, so I just bring it to the front again. We follow up with five single crochet and a third of those will be worked in the closing chain of the popcorn stitch. And the fifth is in this pico here. And then you see we've got the combination again, the pico splits pico, and we're going to work a pico in the top 
of that split spike. And we've got two single crochet and we make another picot stitch. Now eight of those single crochets and accidentally or intentionally the third again is in the third of those single crochet is worked in the popcorn stitch. And the fifth goes in the picot and the last is another picot again. And you see here's the combination. Pico split pico and we work a pico stitch in the split stitch. Then five single crochet. Again the third is worked in the popcorn stitch. And the fifth again falls into the pico. Another pico stitch, pico single crochet, and then we're working 11 single crochet. The first goes into the pico, and the third is worked in this clover blossom. Rem remember, the clover blossom has two um, loop pairs. I'm going to skip this wider looper here and I will be working in the closing chain. You can work in whichever you prefer. That's totally up to you. Just remember that there are two but you only work into one of those. So that was the third. Five, six, seven, and the eighth goes in a pico. Nine, ten, eleven. Why is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ha! Ah. Because we've, we're here at the combination. So that's what we have to consider. Then, oh, sorry, I, made, I didn't mention, I just made it. We make another picot stitch between those two picots here. And then again, five single crochet. The third goes into the popcorn stitch. And then another pico. And now we're working eight single crochet again. The fifth falls into pico stitch. And here's our center stitch, which is the last of the clover blossoms. So remember a treble in the front loop that is one behind and two rounds below. Unfinished and a double treble in the same front loop. Then a triple treble in those loops here. Another treble treble in the same loop. A double treble in the front loop one ahead and two rounds down. And a treble in the same front loop. And now we yarn over and go through all loops on the hook and I close with a 
chain chain one skip the stitch behind this clover blossom and from here another eight single crochet And the fourth falls in the picot. As does the eighth. A picot stitch. Then five single crochet. The third in the popcorn. Another pico between those pico stitches here. And then 11 single crochet. The fifth falls into a pico. And the ninth falls into the clover blossom and again I'm going to skip this wider stitch and I'm working into the closing chain here that's nine ten and eleven another pico stitch pico single crochet and then five single crochet Again, the third is worked into the popcorn stitch. And the fifth again goes into the picot. And then we make another picot. Now we're working eight single crochet. And the fourth falls into the pico the six falls into the popcorn another pico stitch then two single crochet And one more pico. Five single crochet. Again, the third of those falls into the popcorn stitch. Then a pico stitch, a pico single crochet. And then two single crochet and another picot. And we'll finish with three single crochet. And that's it. So that's a quick round. And when you're finished, when you've repeated on the other three sides, you slip stitch into this first single crochet here that you made into this chain two space. And then in the next round, I'm going to show you how to work over this corner. And I think the rest will be super duper easy. Okay, I'll see you in a moment. So this is round 60. Normally I wouldn't even need to show you how to work it because everything is single crochet in this round. But let's just do the beginning together. So we start with a chain one, which I already did. And we are going to make a single crochet chain to single crochet. 
and the uh, corner and the first single crochet goes into this chain one before the puff stitch. So now we're going to chain two and then the second single crochet of this corner will go in the chain one space just after the puff stitch. And from here, everything is as you know it. So let's just do a few um, together. We're going to work only single crochet in this round. And we did that before here in the picot stitches. You just work a normal single crochet. Everything is really as you did before. The only change if you want to do that is here. No, here in the middle. Well, we have the clover blossom. I usually work in the closing chain just to make it a bit neater and, and smaller because this um, loop tends to be a little bit bigger. So usually I work into this closing chain of the clover blossom stitch. However, there are a few options and there is a video tutorial how to work over the clover blossom stitch as well. And the options are either to work a double crochet behind and below in those skipped stitches or loops. And the alternative would be to work a front post single crochet around the clover blossom here or just simply work into this stitch. So whichever option you choose, you're totally free to do however you like it, whatever you prefer. And as I said, this is the only stitch that gives you those options. Everything is really just plain and simple single crochet as you have done so many times before. So, all you need to do is to really single crochet around in this round and then close either with a slip stitch, but because it's the last round, I would suggest to close with an invisible join. And there's also a video tutorial on this website for that, for how to do that. So I'm hoping that you have enjoyed the journey with Claire so far. Well, so far because it's now almost finished. Unless you want to do it again and try it with two colors or three or, or even more. And then we continue with the season two squares, the smaller squares. And I really look forward to seeing you there. Take care.